Hi, I'm Linda of Windy Oaks, and I'm so glad you've joined me today. Today we're going to talk about the tools you need to get started with hand spinning. There's so much out there for sale, and it can be really confusing knowing what you actually need to get started. If you want to dive into this amazing craft, then this is the video for you. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel, and thank you for being part of the flock. Okay, I kid, I kid, but it's not that far from the truth. Hand spinning can be a very simple craft to get into. There doesn't need to be a lot of tools, you don't need to spend a lot of money, although there are so many toys and gizmos and gadgets that you can really go crazy. When it comes down to it getting started, you don't need that much. For millennia, people spun fiber without any tools. They took fiber, usually a bast fiber, that's B-A-S-T, uh, like linen from flax or nettle fiber, and they just spun it using their hands, no extra tools. The next innovation was using a spindle, going into the technology of spinning wheels and then all the way to mill machines. So. There's nothing to say that you have to spend money to be able to spin. You can actually spin on just a stick. Now, is it easier with some of the modern technologies? Sure, but that doesn't mean that spinning has to be expensive or that you need a million toys to get started. One of the first things that you need to get started is obviously knowledge. That's why you're watching this video and really, there are two books that I always recommend. The first book I recommend is Respect the Spindle by Abby Frankmont. She is a giant in the field of modern textile arts and just has so much good information from the physics of spindles to the history of spinning. And this book is a must read. I absolutely recommend it to everyone. The second book that I think is just the bee's knees is Yarnitecture by Gillian Moreno. The nice thing about this book is it breaks down in detail how to get the yarn that you want for the project that you're going to make. There's so much that goes into spinning that is not just adding twist to fluff. Even though that's the basics, there's so much more to it to get where you want to be, to have the yarn you want, to make the yarn you love, and then there are different techniques and different ways of getting to that yarn that you want. This book is foundational for understanding how to build that yarn as you are spinning. Uh, so both of these books I'll link down in the description and you can check them out for yourself. I highly recommend them. There are so many different kinds of spindles out there. This one is called a bottom whorl, W-H-O-R-L, drop spindle. And it's called that because the whorl or the weight is at the bottom. And the whorl determines how fast your spindle will spin compared to the actual spindle part. It's called a drop spindle because you hold your fiber source up here and you spin it dropped. Now I am doing something that you should not do when you are using a drop spindle. I am holding my arms up above my shoulders. I am only doing that to get this in camera range. Other types of spindles include a supported spindle, which sits in this spindle bowl and you just twirl it like so. Now again, I am holding this higher than my shoulder. I would not do that if I were spinning for any length of time that puts way too much stress on the shoulder. I would put this down in my lap to get my arms at the right height. And my favorite type of spindle, it's called a Jilligan. It's not spelled that way. It's spelled D-E-A-L-G-A-N. It's a Scottish style spindle. And the thing I love about it is you can use it as a drop spindle like this, or you can hold it and do what's called twiddle spin spinning like this. 
And the nice thing about this is it's really easy on the shoulders. You're not going up and down. And I really like that about twiddle spinning. Now, what I usually do is I lay this on my lap and it goes pretty quickly. Just holding it like this, it's not very quickly, but not very fast this way. But if you hold it on your lap, you can use your lap to support the weight of the spindle and voila. These are only three kinds of spindles. There are so many different kinds of spindles out there. For instance, there are long, thick ones where the bottom rests on the ground and you roll it on your thigh. And that's used for making thick rug yarns. Uh, often it's referred to as a Navajo spindle because that's one of the techniques that they use. Uh, there are little tiny spindles that are great for sticking in a bag as you go and travel. There are hundreds of different kinds of spindles and you can find whatever works for you or the yarn that you are making. Another tool you can use is a distaff, D-I-S-T-A-F-F. I don't tend to use it because I generally spin from roving or top. But if you like to spin from bats, this is a great technique. Now this distaff is actually just the bar from my Nitty Knotty. You don't need anything fancy to use a distaff. Though there are some beautiful ones out there that you can get. And they are handy because they really do hold a lot of fiber. There are also what are known as wrist distaffs. And they can be little bags or little dangling ties that you used to attach the fiber. So there are lots of options out there if you like to use bats or like to have your fiber source held out of the way. You also often see these on spinning wheels, especially antique spinning wheels, and especially on flax spinning wheels. Um, so distaffs are handy. They hold your fiber. They can free up your hands, especially if it's a long one that you can tuck under your arm or uh, stick into your belt. Many people like to use a spinning wheel instead of a hand spindle. And there are so many different kinds of wheels out there. There are castle style wheels where the mother of all and the flyer are above the wheel. There are Saxony style wheels where the, the drive wheel and the mother of all and flyer are side by side. There are e-spinners that don't have any treadles. My particular favorite is my Lindrum wheel. It's a castle style wheel and it is the bee's knees. It folds for travel. It has multiple different heads, jumbo, regular, and fast flyer. So I can do everything from the finest fine lace all the way up to art and textured yarns. But not everyone enjoys spinning on the same wheel. That's why there are so many different makes of wheel out there from different manufacturers. You can get an antique wheel if it's in working condition. Some people still spin on great wheels, the Sleeping Beauty style wheel. There's just so many options out there. I encourage you if you have the chance to go out and try different wheels. Fiber festivals are a wonderful place to do that if you can get to one. There are usually vendors who are selling different brands and styles, and sometimes vendors bring their personal wheels and will let you, with permission of course, try out their wheel to see what you think of that particular kind. In addition to spindles and spinning wheels, and of course the fiber that you need to spin, there are so many other tools. The first thing in my bag is my control cards. I talked about them in my video on spinning consistent yarn, which I'll link in the cards. And if you go to the link in the description to sign up for my newsletter, you can get a spinner's notebook that has tons of information, including some printable control cards. A pair of scissors, essential. The next thing in my bag of tricks is a crochet hook. Now you can use this as an orifice hook if you don't have of your own uh, or you can use it to do a ply back test where you pull out a section of the single you just spun hang this on your yarn and let it spin and ply and the nice thing about having a weight on it is when you unply it 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 keeps it straight so that it doesn't tangle i have a tape measure 
stitch markers and tapestry needles I typically use for knitting, for weaving in ends or marking stitch counts, but I do occasionally use tapestry needles if I am trying to splice in a yarn. I keep a nail file because if you get a snagged nail, you can snag your fiber very easily. And that is a real pain. It, it can lead to lumps and just also really annoying as you're spinning. My ever-present uh, lip balm and some working hands hand cream. Now, my hands get really dry, especially in the winter. And I like working hands. It's, you know, I'm not sponsored or anything. I really like these. But the thing I will say about this is this is a very grippy lotion. So I would always wait a few minutes after you put it on before you start spinning again. Last but not least, I keep my spinning wheel oil in it. It's just sewing machine oil, nothing fancy. My Lindrum doesn't need a whole lot of oil, but I do oil the bobbin shaft to keep it rotating smoothly the orifice and where the back meets the bobbin shaft so that as it turns, it doesn't squeak. A lazy Kate is another very useful tool. What you do is you put your bobbins that have been filled with your singles yarn on it and then you ply from it so that you can have multiple singles that you will be plying into one yarn. This particular Lazy Kate comes with the Lindrum. There are lots of really good ones out there, and you can even make your own using a shoebox and those aluminum double-pointed knitting needles. Another thing that you will find absolutely invaluable is extra bobbins. Uh, these are some plastic, I think they're 3D printed ones, that are wonderful. These bobbins actually come with this little thing that fits inside of it. And then this can go in the chuck of a power drill. So it's very easy. If you only have one bobbin for your spinning wheel, it's very easy to spin it off onto the storage bobbin. And when you are ready to ply, you just put your storage bobbins onto your Lazy Kate. I just wanna give a quick shout out to Vivian. Hi Vivian from Instagram, whose video idea this was. Thank you very much for the idea and I hope you enjoy this video. I hope this video has been helpful to you. If you have any other questions about the tools for hand spinning, please leave them in the comments. Thank you for being part of the flock and I'll see you next time.